and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So here's a challenge. Making open world games is generally really difficult. That's one of those genres where it really takes a AAA team, so kind of similar to MMOs. However, nowadays there are tons of really awesome tools that can help you make a game just like that. So the challenge is, using all of these tools and assets at my disposal, can I make an open world game in one week? That's the challenge that I attempted, so let's see if I managed to achieve this goal. Stick around to the end to see the final result, and check the link in the description for a list of all of the assets and tools that I used in making this a reality. And actually, right now, all of those are on sale as part of the Unity Summer Sale on the Asset Store. You can find anything from visuals, effects, tools, game templates, shaders, systems, and a bunch more. Tons of awesome stuff, all of it at a nice discount, so check it out with the link in the description. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. So, I started my challenge with the most obvious thing, which is actually making the map. This is actually a topic that I've wanted to research for quite some time. Making large worlds like this one requires connecting multiple terrains together and actually streaming them in and out of memory. So for that, this was the perfect excuse to learn how to use a tool that I've been meaning to look at for quite some time. That tool is Gaia, which is a world building tool. It's one of the highest rated assets on the store. It has thousands of 5 star reviews. Although I was always a little bit intimidated because it's such a powerful and complex tool, so it takes a bit to learn. But if you want to make an open world game, then a tool like this one is absolutely perfect. And actually, after diving through the documentation and learning how to use it, it is actually surprisingly easy. It has tons of options to enable you to get the exact open world that you want to build, but if you just want something basic, then just following the guided setup that will make you quite a really nice world. Now importantly, this also handles the thing that I thought was going to be extremely complex, which is the world streaming, and Gaia already handles that automatically. When you define the world size, you define it as the size per each terrain, as well as the tiles for how many terrains you've got on the X and the Y axes. Then when you generate, everything is already generated split per each terrain, and then it automatically streams those pieces in and out as you move through them. So here is a huge open world that I can fly around, and all of the various pieces, as you can see, they are all automatically streamed. It's really impressive how easy this was to set up. If I were to build this whole system by myself, it would have taken me months. Whereas over here, by using this tool, I just spent a few hours reading their documentation doing some testing, and here it is, a nice functional open world. So this is a really great practical example of how using great tools can massively speed up your development and help you save months or even years of development. Then, with the basic map working, I got it set up to look exactly like I wanted. I wanted something like a dark alien sci-fi planet. And for that, the first thing that I did is one of the things that I've talked about many times previously on the channel. One of the simplest things you can do to greatly improve the visual for your game is just changing out the skybox. For that, I used the All Sky Pack, which is a huge pack with over 200 skyboxes, everything from some hyper-realistic ones to some anime ones. In this case, I picked one that looked nice and sci-fi, nice and dark, just changed the colors for the directional light a little bit, and everything already looked immediately different. And now that the map was done, it was time to work on the player. I wanted a first-person player with first-person hands. This is another topic that I've been meaning to look at, and finally this was the perfect reason to do that. I found a nice pack with some first-person hands and animations. Now, it is very important that the hands are actually rigged so that I can actually build some animations. Although the animations included in this pack, those are all already great. It already includes some magic animations, which is perfect for exactly what I want. Then, with the animations working, I needed some kind of character controller. So yet again, I took this opportunity to look into another asset that I've been meaning to look at. It's the kinematic character controller, and this one actually used to be paid and was made free just a while ago. This is one of the highest rated character controllers on the store. It supports pretty much any terrain, so it works on slopes, edges, steps, and so on. It even has custom inverted gravity, so it's really adaptable. So anyways, I just imported this one into the project. I added my first person hands on top, and with that, I had my nice first person controller. With that done, I then just took my working character controller with the hands, picked it up from my testing scene, and dropped it on the map scene. And just with that, here is my character working flawlessly. I've got a character with nice hands and animation, perfectly walking around this vast, huge open world terrain. Again, it's really impressive how I got this far this quickly just by using a ton of really useful tools and assets. Then the next thing that I wanted was a plane to travel long distances. In my mind, I was thinking something like Just Cause, where you can essentially spawn a plane that spawns in front of you and you can use it to travel long distances. So I grabbed a plane visual from the Sentient Military Pack. However, I also did not want it to look like a regular plane. This game is meant to be kind of sci-fi. And for that, I actually used another super useful tool called Colorize. This one lets you easily change colors for specific parts of the mesh, and it works especially well on low-poly meshes. You can change the color, and importantly, you can also change or add a mission. So in my case, I spent a little bit of time just reading the documentation and learning about this tool, then I just changed the color of the plane on various parts and added some emission to the engines. Yet another excellent way of improving the visuals for your game is just using a nice custom shader. For this use case, there are tons and tons of excellent examples on the store. There's many really useful, really creative shaders. 
Personally, I always really enjoy the anime aesthetic, so I pick Quibbly. This one is a great asset with tons of options to help you make your game cell shaded. Which, by the way, this is also the exact same shader that I'm using in my own upcoming Steam game, Dinky Guardians. Go ahead and add it to your wishlist. So add this shader to the plane and the character's hands and everything looks great. Then while the player is in first person, the enemies are going to be in third person. So for that, I need some third person animations. And for the enemies, I wanted them to pretty much just use some melee attacks. And for that, I found this excellent pack with a bunch of fighting animations. The character that I'm using is taken from another synthy pack. And it's a regular humanoid character, so it already works automatically with any humanoid animation. However, for this particular pack, this one with some fighting animations, this one only has fighting animations. So it actually doesn't have something basic like a basic Wong forward animation. Now, thankfully, Unity actually has a third person asset. It's a character controller that also includes some basic animations. So I just use the basic Wonk animation from that pack and all the attack animations from the other pack. Then I get to work on the plane controller. This is another thing that I could probably use an asset from the store, but I wanted something pretty basic, so I just built it myself. The tricky part was only handling the rotation, since planes can rotate in any axis. I did it like I normally do by just changing the Euler angles, and that actually caused it to break down completely. Although thankfully this solution was pretty simple, just rotate using quaternions instead of Euler angles, and with that, yep, the plane was working. I just added some forward movement, I made a basic script for spawning the plane, grabbing onto it and jumping out, so pretty much the exact same logic that you see in some games like Just Cause, it's a great mechanic for large open world games. Next was making some basic enemy AI. I use a super simple state machine, pretty much exactly like I covered in a video a long time ago. It just finds the player, move towards it and attacks, the animations are triggered, so all of it is pretty simple. For the player, it also needs some attacks, so I made it shoot bolts out of the hands. For the awesome particles, I use the all-in-one VFX toolkit. This one isn't actually an asset with just a bunch of particle effects, but rather it's a tool for making particle effects. Although it does come with some pre-made particles. So I used some of those and only added some slight modifications. The other part is the animation for shooting bolts out of the hands. The hand animation did have some hand shoot animations, but the windup was a bit way too long. So here's a quick hinty tip that I also covered in a previous video. If you have some animation that you downloaded from an asset pack, chances are it won't show up as read-only, so you cannot modify it. But you can select the animation, duplicate it, and now the duplicated animation, that one will be editable. I did just that, and then I cut the first three frames to make it nice and snappy. Then since I have attacks, I also needed some way to deal damage. And for that, I actually used my own free asset, the health system. It's a super basic health system. I just attached it to the enemy, added some basic collision logic to the projectiles, added some extra particles on hit, and that's it, it's done. Also, the main part of this open world game is that our castles placed all over the world. The way the player captures those castles is by destroying the castle heart. So for building this, once again, I used a bunch of prefabs from the all-in-one VFX pack. I just played with some settings to make it a little bit more chaotic, so added a bunch more distortion. Then I just made a nice animation with a Cinemation camera to make it rotate around, go up, and increase the size of all the effects. Just did something like that, and the end result looks pretty nice. With that part done, then I polished the logic for jumping on the plane. This required making some slight custom animations. For example, the pack that I was using for the hands doesn't have any animation for bringing the hand down. And for editing and creating animations directly inside Unity, for that I use a super useful tool called Umotion. It's a really great asset if you want to animate directly inside Unity. It's especially great because, for example, with humanoid animations, you cannot edit them inside Unity by default, but you can with this asset. So I made some simple animations coupled with some simple effects. I also made a simple trail render that is shot towards the plane. And with that, jumping up to the plane looks pretty great. Next was handling the logic for when the player captures a castle. I wanted the world to essentially change color. How I did that was some basic logic that played around with the light and the volume weight. It's just some basic logic checking the player distance to the castle and seeing if the castle has already been captured. With that done, I got busy on manually placing castles all over this huge world. Then I made a minimap, although this time, since I wanted a full map, I did not actually do it like I covered in a previous video where I used a second camera. Instead, over here, I just took a screenshot of the entire world and made a texture, then manually placed all of the castle icons. After that, I also used my own asset, the Mouse Cursor System Pro. This is a super easy to use asset that allows you to add custom animated cursors to your game. In this case, I just attached some basic components and used a nice attack cursor on top of the castles and a move cursor elsewhere. It's a super simple addition, but looks really nice. Then I also implemented a nice waypoint mechanic. I can click anywhere in the map and it will spawn a huge waypoint that is visible from very far away. This is great for navigation in this huge open world. Then I populated all the castles with enemies and I used the excellent A-star pathfinding project to make them avoid walls. 
put it all together, and here is the final game. Alright, so here I've got my player character. I can walk around, I can shoot bolts from my arms. I can also open up the map to see where I am in this huge open world. And I can see I'm right next to a nice castle, so let's go into that one. So let's walk straight there. And yep, there's the castle right there, so let's approach it. And as soon as we go inside, yep, we do see a whole bunch of enemies, so let's try to take them out and avoid them as they try to attack me. Alright, all the enemies are down, so now I can take out the castle heart. So just fire tons of bolts, get it down, and there you go, a really nice death animation. There you go, shaking, going up. And if the castle heart is gone, the castle has been captured, so the light up there turned green, and the visuals on the post-processing, that one also changed. So instead of being very dark, now there's quite a bit of light. Now I can use the map again and see, okay, there's another castle up there, so let's go there. I can place the waypoint. And yep, there's the waypoint, so let's summon in my plane and let me go straight onto it. And there you go, I'm on my plane, so now I'm traveling a nice long distance, super fast. And right now the color has changed because I entered into enemy territory. And there it is, my waypoint and the castle, so I can now jump out. And there you go, the plane despawns. And here I've got another castle that I can now capture. So now I go inside, I take out all the enemies. Then I take out the heart. And if there it is, another castle nice and captured. Alright, so that's the game that I built. Now looking at this, I would say that I did complete the challenge successfully. I did indeed manage to make an open world game all by myself in a pretty short period of time. So this is a great practical example of just how powerful great tools can be. How a solo indie dev nowadays can do something that previously would have taken weeks and a team of hundreds of people. All the tools that are used are currently on sale on the Asset Store as part of their summer sale. So if you'd like to make a game like this one, definitely look into those tools. And check out everything else on the sale. You can find anything from visuals, effects, tools, game templates, shaders, systems, and a bunch more. There's tons of awesome stuff, all of it with a nice discount. So check out the tools that I use in the description and perhaps challenge yourself to build something that would have been previously impossible and use all the tools at your disposal to bring your vision to life. All right, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.